Yo, what is good everybody? It's your boy Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. This is What If Deku was a reincarnation of Madara, Madara Part 2. Um, <laughs> um, as always, if y'all enjoyed, uh, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. If you're watching this on or listening to this on Spotify, make sure to uh, leave a follow and a 5 star rating. Um, yeah, if you guys don't know, I, I, I do this on YouTube and I also do this on Spotify, so... Um, it, it's the same content on both platforms. It's just uh, for for those who like Spotify, you can watch it. You can watch it. Uh, it comes out like a day later than when the normal uploads come out. But yeah, uh, I don't have, I don't have much else to say. That's all I got. And uh, yeah, let's get right into the what if. Let's get it. Azuku Midoriya gets on his hero outfit, and frankly, it's nothing too crazy. His hero hero outfit's actually pretty darn simple it's actually just pretty decent armor he doesn't know his full range of capabilities just quite yet yes he's trained with various heroes and he's worked on various things but he doesn't know his full range of capabilities not not to the largest largest extent i mean let's bring up his sharingan for instance he knows how to utilize the sharingan to a, va a vast degree but he also hasn't really practiced with his genjutsu or basically manipulating people using his eyes very much in the first place the reason for this is i mean who's going to kind of participate in that specifically who's gonna be like oh yeah let, i'm gonna let this guy um control my mind for you know for a training session so no one really does that so when he gets ready on it with his hero outfit and walks out to more or less where all might is he gets ready for his hero versus villain training. This training is something that he's pretty excited for. And he wants to see who he's going to be going against. And when everything gets set up, he actually is on the hero team and he's with Ochako Uraraka. And on the other team is Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Ida. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty interesting fight, especially because he's going against his former childhood friend, Katsuki Bakugo. And Bakugo, let's be honest, is here to kind of prove a point. He doesn't hate Izuku by any chance or by any reason, and he doesn't hate him by any means. But he knows that Izuku has been kind of just the prized possession of UA at this moment, and he is the number one in the entrance exam, so he kind of does want to prove a point that he's better than him. So when the heroes, or the heroes being that of Izuku and Ochako, walk into the building to seize a bomb, well, he's immediately charged by, by Bakugo. Bakugo immediately wants to fight Izuku to prove that he's better, but this was a fatal mistake. Izuku immediately glances at, at, at Bakugo, and Bakugo begins to kind of fight Izuku and actually wins the fight. But then, out of nowhere, he ends up on the ground, hurt, and practically knocked out. Bakugo was seeing something that wasn't even there, was seeing things that didn't exist. Bakugo would be wrapped up in capture tape and he would be completely shocked. What just happened? How did it happen? What's even going on? He has no idea. He has no clue at all. He thinks to himself that Azuku must have done something to manipulate his mind, but how, how did he even do that? After defeating Bakugo, Izuku would race up the staircase, eventually reaching Tenya Ida with Ochako Uraka. He would speed blitz Tenya Ida, immediately capturing him and throwing him to the side, and they touched the bomb. Just like that, they defeated the two or the duo of Bakugo and Tenya Ida. It was extremely impressive, and All Might says so after they're all sa said and done as well. And when, they, when they're all talking about how, what they did right, All Might is just flat out impressed. He says all the stuff that Izuku did right and all the stuff that he continued to do right throughout, this, throughout the time. And that he was very efficient in what he wanted to do. Izuku thanks him for the compliments. And obviously he go, goes on about whatever they have to go on, go on throughout this time. Izuku and Ochako are deemed the winners. And everyone kind of gives them a round of applause. 
they say that that was extremely impressive just like what all my was saying and next up azuku watches as melissa would do very do something very similar and she would be just as impressive she is extremely extremely good and azuku would watch as she absolutely takes over her side of things he watches he watches her do very impressive things and watches her succeed in in being or in winning on her side being that she is part of the heroes versus in, instead of the villains Azuku would commend her after it is all said and done and she basically can't talk that much because soon after she would run off to to the support class that she's actually enrolled in as well Azuku would kind of continue his training on his own and some other people would even join him in that training too but Azuku's level of training is so much higher than everyone else's so it's kind of difficult for anybody to try and keep up with all that said though azuku is excited to hear what they're going to do next aizawa actually explains before they actually head to bed and he leaves for the night that they're gonna be doing some stuff at the usj Izuku is excited by this, especially because he's he knows what the USJ is, and he's actually been to the USJ before, so he's pretty excited to, to work with this and actually do stuff over there with Pro Hero 13. Um, the next day would then arrive, and they would all hop on the buses and head off to the USJ. When Izuku would arrive, and everyone would be greeted by Pro Hero 13, Ozuku would listen very, very intently, listening to obviously what Pro Hero 13 has to say, but also is just flat out excited for whatever's to come. Ozuku would listen closely, but then he would begin to get this weird feeling, this feeling deep inside of his gut. He would begin thinking that something is coming. Something? Someone? He's not sure. But as he begins to feel this way, he actually sees something in the middle. He sees that, well, there is something coming. There is villains coming. A portal would open up and tons of villains would begin pouring out. Aizawa would tell Pro Hero 13 to protect the student and immediately he would be just going out and beating on these villains, trying to defeat them. Azuku would immediately think to himself that he needs to help Aizawa and before Pro Hero 13 could even realize, Azuku was on the battlefield as well. Azuku was there to help his father figure, obviously, and he begins to dismantle these villains. None of these villains are anywhere near as trained as he is, so when he begins to piece them up, it's an absolute masterclass. He begins to predict, manipulate, and just easily counter every single villain that's in front. He would, he would beat on them and beat them down really badly and the mass majority of the villains that are there would be defeated almost instantly. Of course, we have Shigaraki, Kirogiri who aren't defeated, but Shigaraki doesn't even realize that, well, all of his villains were practically defeated within minutes, within just a couple minutes. He's shocked to see this, but he's not too concerned just yet. He actually believes that they'll be just fine. And he tells the Nomu to go break that that kid in half and kill a racer head. The Nomu would charge forward and Azuku would watch as it comes charging forward toward him. But Aizawa would immediately step in the way trying to protect him. But Azuku would, would reach his hand out and his eyes would activate. He would activate the, his Mangekyo Sharingan and immediately a Susano would cover both Aizawa and himself. He would protect Aizawa from the Nomu and he would begin to go head to head with the Nomu with Aizawa within the Susano. It was as if a combination of his quirk canceling capabilities with the Susano begins to go head to head with the Nomu. And frankly, he's winning. The only reason why the Nomu is even somewhat keeping up is because of his 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 resistance to almost every damage and or shock resistant and resistance in general. But Azuku begins to shoot fire, lightning, 
all these elementals or this elemental uh or these elements at this nomu and it's seemingly weakening the nomu more and more and more just as the nomu is getting weaker and weaker all might would finally show his face all might would arrive and jump straight into action he would smash his fist into the nomu and another person would come spiraling out of nowhere with a kick and it would be melissa landing a blow to the back of the nomu and immediately land and not allowing all might to land another blow that was crucial to the fight azuku would slam this this giant weapon onto the nomu once again and then as he does this he looks towards shigaraki shigaraki looks into the eyes of azuku and he begins to kind of halt shigaraki entirely paralyzing him but to everyone else it looks like he's paralyzed but to shigaraki it looks like he's actually making a move toward all might azuku would look toward kirogiri kirogiri and well he would do the same thing being able to actually manipulate Kurogiri to a certain extent and look into his mind. And as he's doing this, well, it's perfect because Kurogiri is a manipulated foe. He's, his, he's more or less kind of messed up in the head and he's completely brainwashed. So the manipulation you was using his Sharingan and being able to honestly put him under a Genjutsu is very, very easy. I mean, immediately he would paralyze both Kirogiri and Shigaraki, putting them in, into a, a horrible position themselves. While doing this, Azuku begins to see things that he wasn't expecting to see in the first place. Azuku begins to see, well, many, many different things. And that would include the mind of Kirogiri, a blank slate, but at the same time, realizing that Kirogiri, well, he's an actual person. He's like a Nomu, basically, but he's actually from, kind of, in a way, a dead body. It might sound crazy, but that's the truth of it. Azuku realizes this, and, and he begins to think to himself, maybe this Kurogiri is actually a former hero. Maybe he is something else, but this isn't a normal Nomu. I mean, he realizes that. They're, I mean, they're fighting another Nomu over here. This is what he thinks a Nomu is, but this has very similar characteristics, and he realized that when he looked into their eyes, and he realized that when he started using his Sharingan. He begins to think to himself that his eyes really do tell him everything, but even during this, he has both of them completely restrained, and soon there's many, many other heroes that would arrive, capture them with quark canceling cuffs and got and getting them completely and utterly out of there he captures two one of the most notorious villains that are that is showing up now which is absolutely insane and azuku feels that i mean it was a job well done i mean this is what he's been taught to do at the end of the day there is no version of this that he hasn't been taught to do aizawa has taught him certain ways of kind of restricting villains ways he could use his 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 eyes or his sharingan the ways that he could use just his abilities and other other things like that they've practiced many many of thing uh, many many of things during this time and that's just how it is azuku has worked on this for so long with aizawa they all they all they've done is train 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 and and I mean, it's obviously paid off. It's definitely obviously paid off. And everyone being captured, the Nomu being restricted because obviously he has no orders from Shigaraki or Kirogiri. And it seems like everything is going well. Everything went, went exactly how it should have went with the villain's arrival. And Azuku gets commended once again for everything he did. And Aizawa tells him that he really should be more careful but he did do exactly the the structure of Aiza, what Aizawa intends him to do. And it seems like they may have restricted a ton of mayhem in the future. But they want to get information out of both Kurogiri and also Shigaraki. But that is for kind of a different time, at least for now. Class 1A and frankly a lot, a lot of the other people have time off. Because a villain attack? Yeah, it's kind of sketchy. 
but with an approaching UA Sports Festival, well, all the other classes, Class 1B, um, the business courses, the support courses, they all want to see what's to come. Because at the end of the day, they they can't just give all this priority to Class 1A. And they want to know what's going on in this UA Sports Festival. But unfortunately, this UA Sports Festival will be cut short for some people. The reason for this is, um, well, kind of an odd situation. And it more has to do with Azuku being restricted at the end of the day. And this is the case because of one person and one person only, Kirogiri. Now, this seems like an odd situation. Here comes the UA Sports Festival and the first, the very first event would approach. The very first event would be something pretty simple. It's an obstacle course race. And this obstacle course race would be kind of done pretty much as simple as you think it would be it would start with a large or like a large corridor that shrinks on the inside and it seems as if you can get stuck in there very easily azuku would blitz past this and even blitz past the robots relatively easily slicing through them as he's allowed to have one weapon he's actually utilizing a bit of a katana and like i said before he actually is pretty good with most weapons he's been kind of blessed with that in fact but while, while the UA Sports Festival is going on, there's something else happening at a nearby in investigation and governmental facility. A facility kind of based around all these heroes, but it seems like they're trying to interrogate Kurogiri. And they begin to kind of mess with Kurogiri and try to play with different frequencies to try and get him to speak. And eventually, Aizawa would see something that would shock him to his core. He would see... The face of a friend. The face of Obero. This would absolutely kind of off-put um, uh, Aizawa and also present Mike who decided to actually not commentate the UA Sports Festival. But with all that said, someone needs to go drag out Azuku because with his powers they may get more answers than questions they currently have. So after the obstacle course race, after Azuku gets first in that obstacle course race, he actually is pulled out of the next event. Everybody's confused, but Azuku Azuku is basically told on the big the big speaker that Azuku Midoriya is is forced to withdraw for reasons that are under are out of his control. They all think, or people there think, maybe some sort of injury, maybe something like that. But he would be forced away, and he would be asking what's going on. He they they tell him to not worry about no, but about about agencies and stuff like that. They need him to do something for them. Azuku follows Aizawa, and eventually they would arrive at a facility. And when they arrive, he would walk into a room with Kurogiri. Azuku would be told to utilize his Sharingan, but Azuku looks at him and shakes his head, saying that he can, but the answer is not going to be something he'll like. And of course, Aizawa is confused by this, and Azuku tells him that Kurogiri is a dead body, that that thing within him is no longer Obero, he's clinging onto life. And frankly, there's nothing left of Obero within him. But Aizawa and President Mike would say otherwise, saying that they saw Obero. Azuku would be confused by this. How did you see him? That doesn't even make sense. But Azuku would say that he'll try his best and see what he can do as he looks within the mind of Obero and just looks past everything that's going on. He begins to see things that he shouldn't know. Obviously, he'd see various, various different things. We're talking about about stuff that's go that went on in the past and stuff that that well frankly he wouldn't know and only Obero would know as well but he would also see Obero half dead and almost completely out of it but then it seems as if all for one picks him up brings him away and he creates his very very true Nomu he creates Kurogiri this would definitely be something kind of odd something that he didn't realize he would see but then Azuku begins to try and extrapolate Obero from the Nomu trying to rip them apart trying to make them separate 
trying to bring Obero back, but then Izuku would collapse. He would say that there's no way. He can't do it. How is he, how is he supposed to do it? There's very little there. It's just fragments. He looks at his at, at his album once again, and he says he knows that that person must have meant so much to him, but there's so little he can do. He doesn't think he can do anything. He apologizes, and as he's about to leave, he begins to see Kirogiri begin to shake, shake out like intensely as well, and the face of Oboro and even partially his body would reveal itself. Azuku would be completely off-put by this and would be kind of insanely imp impressed by it. He would be at a loss for words. How does this even make sense? How He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it at all. Azuku would tell them that they need to surveillance him as much as possible. But there's very little Azuku himself, or he says, there's very little he can do at this moment. But maybe he can learn something new and learn something more from him. He points over and he points toward another room and Izuku is talking about, well, he's talking about Shigaraki. And this is something that that Aizawa didn't even think about, but they bring him over towards Shigaraki and Shigaraki is kind of just talking about how they're not going to get away with this, that <laughs> he won't be here for long, that someone is going to come and take him out of here. Izuku would immediately look into the, the eyes of Shigaraki and he begins to see different things. He begins to see various, various different things. But there's certain things that he, well, doesn't necessarily understand to a large degree. But he does tell him that Shigaraki seems to be part of a plan beyond what their comprehension is at the moment. There's a lot of missing puzzle pieces and there's a lot of things that they are currently missing themselves. And Shigaraki wouldn't say a word, but it seems as if Azuku hit it right on the head. He is part of something greater. He is part of something more. And Aizawa would ask Azuku if he thinks it's all connected to All for One, in which he nods, saying that it could definitely be. I mean, there's nothing, there's, <laughs> there's no reason that it wouldn't be. And he would assume that Shigaraki might be the heir apparent to, to the villain throne that All for One is holding. In which this would definitely shock them, but connecting the dots, this would make sense to a large degree. They, he, would, he would tell them that this facility needs to be on lockdown at all times. They cannot allow All for One in at all, because there's a good chance that he might just show up. So they need to be careful. They need to be aware. And of course, there's, there's, the facility is like completely jam packed and more or less like it's protected, very protected, but they never know what that villain Kingpin is even thinking. All for one is seemingly is known to be someone that is a bazillion steps ahead of everybody. So you never know what he might be thinking. With all that said, Aizawa would allow Izuku to leave and he would tell him that he might have him come by again um, if well, well, they, if they learn anything new and also if they can maybe work with Kuragiri more and more. Azuku thinks this is a good idea. Maybe they can get Obero back, but he, wouldn't, he would tell Aizawa to not get his hopes up necessarily because there is no guarantee there. There's a, there's a large, large chance that, that that guy, his friend, is just gone. But there's one thing that is a positive, that they don't have Kirogiri anymore, and that he is probably a crucial part in all of this, just like Shigaraki. Aizawa would, would let Azuku leave, and he would bring him back to UA. And when he would arrive, it seems that the UA Sports Festival was finally coming to a close. Azuku says that he looks forward to whatever is coming next, and Aizawa would tell him, that to not worry about agencies and stuff like that, that they're sure they can give him or get him a really good agency. Azuku would smirk and give him a thumbs up and say and say that he's going to see how Melissa did. And he goes over and he would learn that Melissa actually won the UA Sports Festival, which wouldn't shock him because at the end of the day, being that she is support a support and a uh, 
an actual hero or in the hero courses, she's actually allowed to use support and her cork. So utilization of both is extremely powerful for her, especially because of the, the kind of equipment that she she's made, especially being able to utilize more, more of one for all to a larger degree. But with that said, that is the end of part two. And when we come into part three, we'll be getting into the hero agencies or well, the bit of the internships. With that said, I hope you enjoyed and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.